Hello everybody, my name is Dawn Marie Galantucci and I am a dental hygiene instructor. My other passion is educating others about um, periodontology and the need to really uh, be comprehensive in our diagnosis. Um, one way that we can do this is to take a closer look at vertical bite wings versus horizontal bite wings um, because uh, many times we can often miss things if we're not paying attention to what type of bite wing we're taking for our patients. Um, the history of radiographs, basically, um, we know Röntgen is the father of x-rays. He discovered the potential of an x-ray beam in 1895. He was awarded the first Nobel Prize ever given in physics up to that time, so pretty significant. And we know radiographs, of course, changed dentistry. Um, why were bite wings, though, invented? Well, the name came from the original technique that required a patient to bite on a small wing of paper attached to a film packet. So um, we've probably wondered where that name came from, and that's where it came from. Now, a man named Clark in 1909, he took the first bite wing to show the interproximal or in-between surfaces of the crowns of the teeth. Um, what I'd like to really understand for people and dental hygiene students, dental professionals for you to understand is that um, while it may not seem that significant about which type of bite wing you take on a patient, um, we want to remember that the horizontal bite wings are primarily used for caries detection. Any bite wing is primarily used for caries detection. Just like every x-ray has a function, uh, for example, a periapical x-ray is exactly what it says. It's trying to show you around the apices so you can see if there's um, any kind of pathology, if there's any kind of resorption, anything like that, um, you're seeing the entire tooth and the root of that tooth. Um, well, with a bite wing, our primary goal is to see interproximal caries. Interproximal health, is there incipient caries? For instance, right here, there's incipient caries starting. Well, if we see incipient caries, we know we can educate our patient and let them know that these are these can stay the way they are if the proper hygiene of fluoride is implemented. Um, same thing, these we know are deep caries. Um, and of course, we can see them on a periapical x-ray, but a bite wing is the optimal x-ray for that. Um, however, what I want to just talk to you about today is the fact that Diagnosis of periodontal disease it requires a full periodontal assessment. And in order to do a full periodontal assessment, you need the right radiographs. Radiographs are very, very important in the diagnosis of periodontal disease. So take a look at this, um, at these x-rays. What would have been missed if only a horizontal bite wing was taken? Well, if we take a look, and of course, we know that this is a premolar x-ray. Um, we don't see the whole premolar here, but um, we would also take a vertical bite wing showing just the molars. But take a look. Um, we are missing, we would have missed this bone height right here, the true bone height, if we had just stuck to the horizontal bite wing. Now, this is not a big deal if we had taken a full mouth series because we would have seen the bone on a periapical x-ray. However, um, there are some practices where only panoramic x-rays and bite wings are taken. And while panoramic x-rays are fantastic, and the more and more further we get with technology, the better they're getting, some detail can be missed in a pan. So um, if a patient comes in and they don't have a full mouth series and they only have a pan and four bite wings and they were taken horizontally only, this could have been missed. So just something to keep in mind um, when we are deciding what type of x-rays to take on our patients. And I'll talk more about how we do that on a new patient. Uh, but another example here, um, we see what details could have been missed. We see how beautifully detailed this picture is, how this radiograph is. Do you see this premolar, the height or how much bone they have lost here, okay, which is significant, significant. The PDL is pretty much non-existent at this point. Um, we cannot see the PDL well on a horizontal bite wing. Uh, so um, the vertical is just so much better, especially with crowns and so forth. 
Um, so how important is a vertical bite wing when diagnosing perio? Well, we know the vertical bite wings show evidence of alveolar bone height or lack of furcation involvement, um, which you rarely can see on a vertical, um, excuse me, horizontal bite wing. Um, cervical caries and root caries. So a lot of times with the vertical bite wings, we only think of perio, diagnosing perio. However, cervical and root caries, especially patients who have, are undergoing um, radiation or chemotherapy, patients who have zero stomia, patients who have had perianal surgery and are left with some recession, they are particularly prone to root um, and cervical caries. We want to be proactive with this. A patient with this type of decay, we know what happens. While it looks treatable on the x-ray, this is rather deep because it's always at least 30% worse in the mouth than it is on the film. And think about your experience with patients who have this type of decay. How good or how um, strong of a, a chance does this tooth have for survival once it's been filled? Can the patient really keep this area clean after it's filled? How much food and plaque is going to be getting caught here? So the thing is, we have to remember, we want to try to prevent this from happening in the first place. Well, one way, this is rather large, isn't it? What if we had taken this vertical bite wing months or a year before, and we could have caught it when it was real small? Or if we were taking vertical bite wings and we saw that this was a vulnerable area, maybe it could have been prevented. We could have put the patient on a stronger fluoride at home. Um, we could really be on top of them about tighter recalls or recare visits. We could talk to them about ways to really keep this clean in between. So the value of a vertical bite wing, it's just there is no real price you can put on it. It's so valuable. Um, now, the question comes up, excuse me, um, the question comes up, and we talk about vacation involvement, I want to just move my little photo here so we can, okay, um, the question of, uh, of vacation involvement is definitely when the new perinatal classification system that came out in 2017, um, Radiographs play such an integ integral role in the um, diagnosis because we're also in that protocol, we talk about frication involvement and you can see a lot on these x-rays because it, you know, you cannot really fully diagnose frication involvement, especially in the maxillary teeth. You can't do it here on these horizontal bite wings. So we have to keep that in mind. Um, how do you know if a new patient needs vertical bite wings? Well, there's something that we do called CAMBRA. It's a caries management by risk assessment prior to taking rotographs. I know in the dental hygiene clinic where I work and work with the students, they have to do very detailed CAMBRA. So what's involved in CAMBRA? CAMBRA, for those of you who've been practicing for over 20 years like me, you may not know what this is. CAMBRA is spot probing um, and it's performed on about six teeth throughout the, um, the dentition. And it's to assess perio risk. And also, of course, we're determining caries risk with these patients. But um, if I have a student that is probing and it's any of the probe readings are five and above, I will have that student take vertical bite wings. It's wonderful if you have previous x-rays to compare and say, okay, there's bone loss. We need to do vertical bite wings. But with a brand new patient who doesn't have any films with them, th this is a good indication of whether or not they're going to need vertical bite wings or not. So what would I recommend in private practice? Spot probe some of the teeth first. Um, if a patient is coming with no dental history with them, no records, spot probe and see if you're getting any readings. See if they have recession. See if they have furcation involvement because then they're going to need those vertical bite wings. What is their diet like? What is their family history like? Those things are also going to determine if they're at a low, moderate, or high risk for caries and perio. Um, I really appreciate you watching this video. Um, for more, you know, blog posts, online courses, and, and more, you can visit my website, dentalhygieneinsights.com. And if you would like to receive 
the latest posts in your webmail or your Gmail or whatever email you have, <laughs> you can subscribe. And, and also, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know if there's any topics you'd like to see researched um, concerning periodontology. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it's helpful for you.